Hello friends, welcome to my channel. Today is the day 6 for our PCNSA series. So in this video, we are going to understand what is EUNG, how exactly it works, how the traffic flow works from EUNG towards the internet, okay, and how we can initially log in to the firewall. What is the difference between an SSH or a console, okay? So this basically topics are dedicated for lab, how we can create a lab, how the traffic uh, inside the labs towards the internet will be going and what is EVNG, how exactly it will be helpful for our labs. So I'll be covering each and everything. So I'll request you to please watch this video till the end. It will help you to build a lab. Also, I've already covered about a detailed video on how to make a EVNG lab. What I'll do is I will be putting in the I button as well as in description. I'll put the link of that particular video so that you can go through that particular series. I have created basically a series of it. Okay. So in this video, it will be very much helpful for creating a lab or doing your own lab for Palo Alto Firewalls. I also request you to please subscribe my channel and hit the bell icon so that you never miss any video from me. So without any further delay, let's get started. Hello friends, let's understand what is EVNG and how exactly it works, okay? So before we move on, let me tell you guys, I have created a series on EVNG, how to set up a lab and all. So I'll put in the I button or else you can find that link of that particular video in the description box of this video so that you can check that out. and you will see recommended link like that and you will find the link which is for EVNG series. Okay. Now, once you complete that particular video, you can come to this and I'll explain you how exactly EVNG works. Okay. So friends, what is EVNG? So EVNG is nothing but it's a network emulator software. So what is an emulator with the help of this diagram we'll try to understand. So as you can see a sample diagram over here, there are so many routers, switches, firewall, and there are so many other devices as well, right? Now to create that a testing environment for networking professionals, EVNG emulator will help you to make that particular testing environment. So in case if you want to test any technology, okay, or if you want to test a device, whether in, in that particular condition, how a device works, you can take a help of EVNG, you can create that particular environment and you can test it. Okay. Now, how exactly it works, let's understand. Okay. Now, whenever, let's say for an example, Cisco router, okay. Now for Cisco router, there is an image which is called as iOS image, right. That image will be installed in Cisco router physical device and there will be a virtual image as well, which basically helpful deploying into EVNG. Same way, Palo Alto has same image PanOS ads for virtual as well. Now, this virtual will be basically installed in EVNG, basically importing that image and you will be able to install that Palo Alto devices into or create a lab with the help of firewalls. And the way this image works, it also works the same way. The virtual image also works the same way. So you can basically test the real world scenarios in this test environment. Here, you're not running any production environment or something. You can test 
द रियल वर्ल्ड थिंग्स इन अ टेस्टिंग एनवायरमेंट वेदर द टेक्नोलॉजी इज वर्किंग और नॉट नाउ दिस विल बी हेल्पफुल फॉर यू टू अंडरस्टैंड इन ऑफ द टेक्नोलॉजी नाउ इट सपोर्ट्स लॉट मेनी थिंग्स ओके बट फॉर नाउ टू अंडरस्टैंड दैट इट सपोर्ट्स मल्टी वेंडर एज वेल so if i say multi vendor means it supports cisco it supports checkpoint it supports fortinet it supports palo alto and Sys- cisco routers cisco switches sd wan f5 and there are so many other devices as well you can go to the website and you can find the supported images as well okay so if you want to go to that particular website what you can do is you can go to the website basically you can type efng and you can click on here and you'll go to efng.net and then you have to go to documentation supported image now as you can see it supports cisco juniper aruba alcatel citrix and so many other devices as well windows windows servers and all right forty manager forty mail so most of the devices it supports so with the help of this tool or the software you can basically create your multi vendor environment for testing purpose to learn any technology or test any technology as well so this will be very very much helpful for creating lab because here we are to learn a technology we can deploy the palo alto here and we can learn how exactly it works okay so friends now we'll understand how the traffic will be flow from evng towards the internet how can we basically test the device when the traffic goes through palo alto or any other firewall towards the internet how can we test the that url filtering on application control how can we check and how the traffic flow will be from our evng lab towards the internet okay so as i expect that you guys have already seen my previous video or not my previous video for this series i am expecting that you guys have already seen my evng video okay so in that evng video i have explained what is evng okay now evng basically install on vmware and vmware will be install on windows okay so now windows windows will be install in a physical desktop or laptop whatever you think of now if i consider a desktop it will have a lan connection if it is laptop it is wifi connection or maybe desktop has wifi connection there is no problem right now the windows will have is connected through this wifi or lan basically so this is wifi and this is lan right now on top of it will install a vmware right now vmware have a virtual nic card this nic card will be connected to your wifi and lan by default right now inside vmware we are going to install evng now evng will have connectivity to the vmware and vmware will have connectivity to lan or wifi so when we send the traffic towards vnet 0 or management zero i'll show you what kind of network it will be if it is sent to that particular cloud that cloud will route the traffic towards evng and from evng it will go to vmware and from vmware it might go to wifi or lan wherever the internet connection is there and when we send this traffic we don't need to do anything it will be done automatically by vmware you don't need to worry about it 
So the traffic goes from our lab to VMware to our physical LAN or Wi-Fi and from there it will go to internet. Okay, so this is how it works. Now NAT also happens but I am not including NAT over here. It will basically make very complicated. So I am not doing it. So this is the stage 1. Not lab. This is lab. Give me a minute. What I will do is I will just scrub this out so that it should be clear enough for you. So this is stage 1. This is stage 2. This is stage 3 and it goes to stage 4 towards the internet. So this is how the flow from your EVNG lab towards the internet. I will tell you what kind of cloud that you need to take. Okay. Is it VNet 0? Is it Management 0? Or what it is? Okay. It basically same for all the uh, EVNG uh, mod, uh, versions. I'll, I'll let you know once we log into Palo Alto Firewall. Okay. So friends, now we'll understand how we can initially access the firewall. So initially, meaning that whenever you get a new Palo Alto Firewall in your environment, your company has bought a new Palo Alto Firewall and you need to deploy it. And you have got the device for the first time. Now how you are going to access it, I'll explain it. And also we'll understand the difference between SSH and Telnet and console, right? So when you receive a physical firewall, you will have a management interface, dedicated management interface and console, okay? I'm not talking about one Ethernet 1 slash 1 or 1 slash 2 or 1 slash 3. I'm talking about management port and console port, right? Now, the for the first time, whenever you receive a Palo Alto firewall, there are two ways. One through management and the other one is through serial. Now, so if you want to access it from management interface, you have to configure an IP address to management interface and through SSH or through Telnet or through HTTPS access, you can basically access the Palo Alto. So how the things will be? Now you have the PC, okay? And the PC will be directly connected to Palo Alto through MGT port. And you will be assigning 192.168.10.1. Okay. And you can assign 192.168.10.2. Okay. So this is how you can assign the Palo Alto firewall. And you can access it. Now, by default, most of the firewall will by default come with this IP address. So, by default, it will come with the IP address 1.1. So, it will already be configured like this. So, you just need to do what? You just need to configure in the same subnet. So, you just need to configure 1 slash 2. That's all. And you will be able to access it. So, by default, it will come with the management interface. Okay. But when you have a VM series firewalls, the DSCP client will be enabled. So if you ha have a Palo Alto VM, it will by default enabled with DSCP client, meaning that it will expect IP address from DSCP server. But if you want, you can, if you want, you can change it to static mode and you can manually assign an IP address, right? And the other one is a serial console connection. Through serial console, you can basically access the device. Okay. Now to access the through the console, you just need a cable, console cable from your PC to Palo Alto. You need a console cable, that's all. It will be connected to console port and through port T you can access it. You need a console cable, but here you just need a LAN cable, right? Now, what is the difference between a SSH, Telnet and console? Now, let's understand the differences between 
tell it in uh, SSH telnet or console. Okay. Now, when you access console, you don't need any IP address. So, IP address is basically not needed. But when you do an SSH or telnet, you need an IP address, which is basically required. Okay. Now, until and unless the Palo Alto starts and the routing table gets populated, if it is directly connected, it's fine. But until and unless the network interface gets initialized, you will not be able to log into Palo Alto Firewall. Okay. But in case of console, no matter if the Palo Alto is getting started, you'll be able to see the console information like the booting updates and all those things you'll be seeing like you'll be seeing uh, it, uh, it is going for a post like checking the devices uh, then checking the um, configuration so all those outputs you will be seeing in the console but when you go for SSH and tell it you will not be able to see those outputs and until and unless your network interface are initialized as also, it establishes a routing, then only you can do a telnet and SSH. Okay. So, let's say if our device got rebooted, okay, and it is going to maintenance mode, with the help of console, you can recognize it, but with the help of SSH and telnet, it is not possible. So, that is the reason, let's say if device is not accessible, it is not uh, reachable through the network. What we'll, say, what we'll do is, we'll send somebody on site and we'll say, put the console cable into the device, okay, no matter what kind of device it is. And through the console, we'll try to reboot the device and check where exactly it is going. It is going to maintenance more or it is, it is having some bug or it, it has some issues or something like that. So, console cable is locally accessible. Uh, whereas telnet SSH and GUI until and unless the network gets initialized it will not be working in the device okay so console works on basically signals uh, we put uh, we put some settings right so it is basically based on the signals but it is basically based on the network traffic okay so this is the difference between an SSH and telnet in the next video i'll be covering in evng how the Palo Alto get started how to configure what is the initial things that you need to do i'll be covering it okay so this is what i need to cover in this video if you like this video or if you have learned something new i'll highly recommend you to please like and comment this video and also I'll request you to please subscribe my channel and hit the bell icon so that you never miss any video from me. Thank you so much for watching. Till then, I'll see you in the next.